Masters, or I'd say Zach, but he doesn't have one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Welcome back We're to Cherishing Third Scripture. Place, yeah. man. Cherishing Scripture podcast. We just finished up Works of the Flesh, and now we're going to talk about Fruit of the Spirits. But before we do that, uh, let's talk about each other. How are you guys doing? Doing good, man. <laughs> doing good. Why don't you want to have a head of hair contest, Jeremy? Hey, look. There you go. Look What's at this thing. Right. Oh, it's we know so who would win that. That'd be Zach, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Why, we have to throw past him the he's got, he's got the do, man. <laughs> yeah. He's got the do. <laughs> I don't even know how long it would take to fix that hair, man. Yeah. It took it me actually. Uh, if I don't, seconds. I have to put it up because if I don't, it's like down to my nose. Ah, yeah. Speaking so. of hair, could you believe that someone offered me 200 bucks to shave my beard completely off? Would you yeah, do it? Yeah, that's I, strange, man. I wouldn't do it. They're crazy. They're just jealous because I look more like my savior who had a beard than they I do. I think the savior's beard was probably a little shorter than yours, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have barbers then, hey, so we don't at, know how long. Seriously, you know there are people You were that, probably more like John the Baptist then. I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know there's actually people who don't believe Jesus had a beard because yeah. they're against beards and they can't imagine their Lord. Yeah, I've seen some then how do they go about the whole, they pulled yeah. his beard out? Plucked He's his like, beard, you know? Yeah. Very I don't even want to tell you how they explain that. Yeah. It's <laughs> ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> It is very. How they say that Jesus actually did not have a beard, and that wasn't referring to a beard. It's crazy. Yeah. That's insane. But oh so, my! Real quick, get us started. Disappointed. Jeremy didn't Bad even get start. us cheer wine this time. So I got I got a good old sweet tea though right here. We're cheer brought wine. to you by we're brought to you by Gatorade. I'm telling now. you right yeah. now, if you don't get busy, cheer wine as a sponsor. Here, this is an empty bottle. I just down this they whole already, thing of Gatorade. They already now. told us no. I already no. emailed them. They don't, no, you know what? They don't look care at about it. the gospel. This no. is the future of the <laughs> Cherishing Scripture podcast and the future of America. If cheer wine doesn't Not change happening. That was originated from University of Florida. We'll do public sweet tea. Yeah. Uh, which we got right here in my Cherishing wow. Scripture Brought podcast. Brought to you by cup. public sweet tea. <laughs> you know, that's kind of suspect. I, I want to know what that is. What in here? Yeah. A little rum and sweet tea, but I mean, just I'm curious. Just kidding. Because that really kind of looks suspect, especially since we finished the works of the flesh. I'm yeah. thinking you might have fallen off the wagon. Hey, it says, it says against You can't fall off the wagon if you were never on it. Yeah. That's true. Hey, hey wait, oh. wait. Hey, I just told <laughs> myself. I'm saved. I promise I'm going to heaven. If, oh God, if I died right now. <laughs> oh, my God. But anyways, gosh. so uh, if we just, like I said, we just finished up. Uh, works of the flesh um there was eight episodes of those so if you've missed those you can go on to google uh podcast apple podcast wherever to get uh to get to listen to those and youtube as well go back catch up like scri- subscribe comment email us your questions um glad to receive questions yeah and uh but today we're gonna take on a new subject and that is the works of the fruit spirit, of the spirit. The fruit of the spirits. Pastor, if you're going to read that section for us. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. But the fruit of the spirit, we're in Galatians 5, beginning in verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Two verses here. Yeah. And a little bit of a briefer list. Zach, why don't you go ahead and comment on that? <laughs> He's got a mouthful of donut right now. He's got a mouthful of donut back there. So Maple donut. Comment. Oh, my gosh, man. It's delicious. What a temptation. Yeah. <laughs> There's one more. We're going to have you all fight for the death after. Uh-oh. <laughs> so putting my money on pastor. Yeah. Um, anyway. Absolutely. No, I love this list. I'm like kidding. I said, you, you don't have to comment. I was just no, It's too late. <laughs> now. I got it. I got it. you out, man. Go but, ahead. Um, uh, donut was good. That's a... That's uh okay. Well, gluttony's not in the works of the flesh, so I'm there. Good. You go. But anyway, there you go. Yes. In the fruits of the spirit, um, I love this list. Uh, I mentioned this, I think, when we first started talking about the works of the flesh. I like to compare the two, both of them, to a garden, especially since it uses the word fruit here, and yes. it, it's really about <clears throat> um, learning how to sow these seeds in your life, or, or plant these seeds and sow them, um, because it's it's a long process. I, I'm I, I think that uh, the older generation that we look at in our church, they they show these and uh, experience these at a deeper and more profound level than I the agree. young people because they understand what it is to love. They understand what to true love joy for decades. is. Yeah, they joy understand for what having peace is and long suffering. And you know, it's kind of uh, it's kind of like uh, we've talked about. You don't know what it's like to go through something until you go through it Mm -hmm. and um with uh i i think it's hilarious i can only imagine when i'm older you know 
some of the things I've went up to older people about and told them I'm just so stressed out about a house and stuff like this. And they're just laughing because they're like, it's just a part of life. You're just, you know, getting used to it. But uh, in different uh, aspects of life, including like your spiritual life, you know, there are things that you're going to learn how to have a peace in all situations. Uh, you're going to learn how to be long suffering to people. That's one that I really try to work on. Uh, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And then I like how in the uh, verse 21, when he talked about the works of the flesh, he ended it with, these shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, and in this verse 23, he ends with, against such there, there is, is no, no law. law. Yeah, it's excellent. It's, it's, a great, it's a great two verses. Yeah, and, I, and I, have, uh, I, I agree with that 100%. No, no, no doubts about it. You know, you're right on that. You know, I would add also. I'm I'm personally a fan of Bible lists. Mm -hmm. I've always been a fan of those. You know, you got that list in Second Peter: add to your faith virtue, and virtue knowledge, knowledge temperance, temperance godliness, and so on and so forth. Uh, for if you have these things, you shall not be unfruitful. But if you don't have these things, he says you're going to be barren, and you're going to forget that you were purged from your old sins. So I love Bible lists. Mm -hmm. I think. Bible lists, especially some of these like we have today, is uh, an outline of the expected experience of ma of the maturing believer. So yeah. I think it starts with love. Mm -hmm. It matures into joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. Uh, there are nine fruits of the Spirit here. I imagine these clustered together in threes. So you got in the early stages of Christianity, love, joy, peace, middle stages of Christianity, long-suffering gentleness and goodness obviously because you know if you're a newcomer to the faith what is long suffering you know mm -hmm. you you've only been saved 6 months that's not long suffering right. so you don't know what long suffering and gentleness and goodness is until you've been saved for a while and then faith meekness and temperaments uh, temperance those all seem to come uh to the more seasoned and mature christians mm -hmm. uh, i love the list i agree with you zach on this i think it's it's a precious passage of scripture these two verses stand out yeah i think in the book of galatians and i would also add um, not only do they stand out as a precious passage but they also fly in the face of the judaizers mm -hmm. who were trying to um hijack the liberty of those believers who had come to Christ uh, in Galatia and other regions like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm excited about the fruit of the Spirit discussion all the way around. Yeah, yeah, what I really like about it is each one of those words there is Christ-like. So Paul is yeah. calling us to be Christ-like. He's pretty much saying everything else above here is nothing like Christ. Yeah. But each one of these, actually in, tw in verse 24, he That's says right. that they are Christ have crucified with the flesh. Yeah. Or I've crucified the flesh. So you can't you can't be you yeah. can't have fruits of the spirit and the yeah. things of the flesh. You never catch Jesus witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife. You'll never catch Jesus envying and murdering and being drunk and reveling. But the fruit of the spirit, which by the way, is the same Holy Spirit who possessed Jesus and and assisted Jesus in his earthly life, mm -hmm. produces love, joy, peace, long suffering, meekness, temperance, a goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. Yeah, so, it's good. Yeah, stuff. and I think that yeah. this kind of goes back. Uh, these fruits of the spirit, when he talks about developing this, it kind of goes back to what he talked about also uh, to the church of Philippi. You know, letting your conversation become as it becometh the gospel, and it's yeah. becoming more and more like Christ, living right. uh, your life according exactly to the gospel right. message. Mm. I agree. Yep. I think so you guys are exactly right. So love. Yeah. Let's start with it there. Yeah. Let's start with love. I yeah. think we could. Probably, uh, depending time. on the length, we could try to do the groups of three, do one, however Possibly, it goes. Yeah. So the word love, if you're a student of the Bible, you know that there are numerous words used uh, that are all interpreted love. And you can find books like Trenches, Synonyms of the New Testament, books like that. Any good word study tool is going to help you to understand uh, what word you're talking about. Um and even though it's translated in English into this one word, mm -hmm. it's very helpful, very beneficial to find out what the original word for this was. In this case, the word is agape or uh, agape, as some people would pronounce it. And so there's the other words for love. There is 
Phileo. Phileo love, which is where we get the word Philadelphia. It's talking about brotherly love. Mm -hmm. Very important and Christ-like, no question. Brotherly love is is, uh, uh, noble. And that would be the one that shows up when it says, let brotherly love continue. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. Let brotherly love continue. There's a couple of other places. You remember when the Apostle Peter uh, is being asked, Simon, lovest thou me more than these? One of those occasions where he is asked, he was asked three times, and one of those occasions is, do you phileo me? Do you have brotherly love? And Peter said, Lord, you know I do. And so there's an occasion of it there. Another word uh, outside of agape, which we'll talk about in just a moment, there's phileo. There is also the word eros. Now, eros is where we get our word erotic. It is talking about physical, passionate love. It's talking about erotic love. Um, The concept is in Scripture, but the word is never used Mm -hmm. because the Bible is not a sexual book. Um, and so, but there was that Greek term that they used. In fact, we would today probably consider that more to be forbidden love, you know, exploratory, um, what would you call it? Uh, sexual ambition. That's Eros love. And so, um, uh, whatever the case may be, we do find those concepts and some of those words in the Bible. This word is agape and it is literally talking about commanded love Mm -hmm. so if it is commanded love then this is affection that is on display the primary and best example of it is god himself this is the way god loves yeah and he does not love based on performance there's Three kinds of of love that we could break down in in those terms. And I don't want to take, I don't want to monopolize all the time here, but uh, there is um, human there's satanic love, which means if you love me, I'll hate you. That's satanic. There's human love, which teaches if you love me, I'll love you. So that's performance based love. Mm. But then there's God's love, right? Which is even if you hate me, I love you. And so this is commanded love. It's love out of duty. Mm-hmm. And people look at that today and say, oh, I don't want to be loved that way. I don't want to be loved because a person has to love me. But what they don't understand is that God's, God is bound to love us because of the covenant. Yeah. And so this is a fruit of the Spirit. Uh, it's not emotional love. It's not based on feeling or attraction or brotherly um, affection. It is based completely on this is love that has spilled over onto us from God Himself, and so therefore we are required to love others the way God loves us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the same beautiful word. word. Yes, it is. Yeah, I just looked it up, uh, and it's the same word that's used in Matthew twenty two thirty nine when He says, "Love your neighbor as yourself." Love your neighbor. It's the agape. It's a commanded love, and it's also Ephesians five: Husbands, love your wives. As Christ loved the ch- as Christ loved the church, so there you have it. You have Christ displaying that love and commanding that love to husbands. I wonder if it's the same as when, earlier when he mentioned um, love thy love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah, Let's that's see. what I yeah, just yeah, mentioned. Same, same word, word. Yeah. agape. Yeah, and he mentioned that earlier and yeah. uh, earlier in Galatians. So really, yeah, uh, right before that, he's when he's talking about the law, the law is fulfilled in one word. Oh, love thy this, neighbor. Love thy yeah. neighbor. Oh, that's why. Yeah, you're so, talking about that one. Yeah, so he's used it again before in, this, good. in this chapter. That's really good. Yeah, that's a, that's a, 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 a you know, it's what we call stringing together pearls. It's an excellent way to do it, excellent way to look at it. Yeah, so, um, and this is, um, this reminds me, I had a deacon in my church. His name was Brother Everett McKenzie, an older man, and one of his favorite things to say was, you don't have to like me. But you gotta love me. That, yeah. was, that was his favorite thing to say to people: "Is you don't gotta like me, but yeah. you gotta love me." And I mean, it's funny and it's which is you true. Know, he was a joke, but it's very true. You yeah. don't have to like the person there. Uh, I, I when we went to Single Vision, Brother Rosser uh, preached a phenomenal series. But on that last night, he started talking about you know uh, he mentioned how there are some annoying people in your church, and immediately. My mind started thinking about people that just get on my faces nerves. come to mind. Yeah, oh yeah, faces came to mind, and then he's like, but then he essentially, and I'm not going to say it exactly like he did, but he said essentially that 
Christ died for them just like he died for you. And yeah. he loves them just as much as he loves you. And you're commanded to love them just as he loved you. And that's I right. was like, wow. Yeah. And like, that's the aspect. There are people that um, maybe rub you the wrong way. You don't feel like y'all's personality smashed, but in the, at the end of it all, that doesn't matter. Christ has still commanded that's you right. to love them. Yep. There's actually four times it's used in Galatians. Uh, chapter five, verse six, all after chapter, all after chapter five. By the way, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Mm-hmm. And then there is Galatians five thirteen. Ye have been called unto liberty; only use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Verse 14. And then verse 14, uh, all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And then fourthly is in our passage here in chapter 5, verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. And I think every one of those, I'm not totally sure, but I think every one of those is probably agape. And I'm looking at them right now. Yep, it is uh, in chapter 5, verse 6. In chapter 5, verse 13, it is agape. And uh, chapter 5, verse 14 is love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah, it's it's actually uh, agapao, which is just another which is just another tense. Yeah, it seems so similar. Yeah, so all four times it's agape or agapao, which means that this is that commanded love that comes from God. And this is even, this commanded love, it's not just with people that you like, it's not just with people that you get along with, as I said, but it's even people you disagree with. Uh, it may be people That's that right. um, have wronged you before, um, but you're still commanded at the end of the day, to love them. And I think that's probably, truthfully, if I was to be uh, completely transparent for me, it's easy for me to love people until they do something to me. Yeah. And then once once they, I feel like they've wronged me or they've slighted me in some way, uh, that's when uh, love becomes very, very it's difficult. A, it becomes a, a But a, at a the task. end of the day, um, it is still here in Galatians. It tells us it's still required. You're still supposed to love them. Yeah. Mm. Even in this room, I mean, you know, we've had disagreements among us, yeah. among ourselves, um, and we've even had occasions, you know, in the past where people in our church have, have thrown in the towel and said, you know, I'm done with this place, I'm walking away. That is a poor example mm-hmm. of what love is supposed to be. I mean, even in this room, you know, we've had uh, struggles and, and disagreements am, among us <laughs> that we have chosen to just bury with love, you know? Yeah. yeah. It was either me disagreeing with Zach or you disagreeing with Zach or somebody else disagreeing with Zach. <laughs> yeah. Well, when I have a problem with Jeremy, I just go home, I have a voodoo doll of him, and I just yeah, stab just it a couple times. In. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Mine and Zach's relationship is a little bit weird. I'm sure, I hope it's okay if I tell our listeners this, but me and Zach do this thing where, um, and I think that's what, honestly, it makes one of our, our friendships probably one of the best friendships because, when we're mad at each other, they'll be like... You guys we, are like best friends, right? We won't... Well, I can... Yeah. You know, I think so. But, yes, he is. I don't like his wife so much. <laughs> until some, <laughs> actually, until my someone wife, new comes along. Actually, to be but, honest, Jackie tells us that we're just a bunch of females. She, yeah, she That's does. She She's the one us. that actually actually probably she fixes said, what? most no, of it. Say that again? We she act called, like a bunch of females. She says we're a bunch of girls. Well, you, but, you guys don't start going to the bathroom together. Well, it's because right. what we do... like we Only legit, shower. We just won't... That's the way these women are. They're all like... I need to go to the bathroom. Anybody else want to go? Could you imagine that conversation oh, with us? Like, hey, which, Jerry, I'm, I'm going go to go ahead and give you a story. <laughs> okay. Yesterday, I go to hang out with my friends, and uh, Jasmine is taking a shower, and Jackie just goes and sits on the toilet and talks crazy. to her the whole time in the shower. I'm like, what in the what world are, are you know? doing? Women are crazy. And they're like yelling. I can hear their whole conversation. I'm like, Women are she's crazy, showering. Man. Just wait five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Women are crazy. Go ahead, Jerry. What but are you it, saying? <laughs> so, Zach and I, we're, we are little children sometimes, but we do this thing where we just won't talk to each other for a couple of days. And then I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's it's not Jackie, but it's at least for me. Like I'm always constantly reminded, like, like how you. It's not the it's not the way to love your brother. You can't no. just no, just you can't have just this, dispose of somebody. Yeah, you just can't cut somebody off. And, I, and I've had people actually come to me before and say, Pastor, why don't you just just deal with this person? Why don't yeah. you just boot that person? Out? Here's the reason why: is because of this commandment, love. Yeah. And love has to have an object. We love God. 
That's the direction of our love toward him. He loves us. That's the mm-hmm. downward direction of his love toward us. If that's the case, I mean, Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples because you have love for the yeah. brethren. Now, what makes and there's me some right? people that are hard to love, but that is the true test of love. Correct me if I'm wrong. This love is supposed to be an overflowing of the love that God's already given us. It's a love that God's already showed us so much love I that agree. we could never... Like contain it also. It's supposed to flow out of us mm-hmm. yep. and uh, affect the others around and us. And yep. what convicts me about it is if I if I'm going to treat Zach that way, Christ, right? He rightfully should have treated me that way. Sure, uh, he should have cut me off because well, how was many my, times did he warn us? Yeah, if you won't forgive your brother, yep, neither shall my heavenly Father forgive you. Yep, it was my sin that put him on that cross, and yeah, he absolutely. should have cut me off, yeah. but he didn't. Because he his love is a agape, huge, big love just overflowed. Sure, and uh, now that that's the key. That's the key one here. You know, that's the first one, the introductory one. And with just a little time we have left, you know, the the first three that I think are clustered together is joy and peace, love, joy, and peace. And those are are I, I think servants of love. Mm-hmm. That's what I believe. If you have love, and it's the way, if it's in the condition that it should be in. You will naturally experience joy and peace. Yeah, yeah, and we'll continue. We'll talk about those a little more. You know, I it sometimes it's nice to go through things faster, but then uh, I I really like when we just dig down and focus sure. on something. And I mean, sure. if we spent eight podcasts on the works of the flesh, might as well spend at least yeah. more. Well, than we got nine three on the fruits here. of the nine spirit. Fruits so. of the spirit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, but sure. it's, Good list. I'm in, I enjoyed this one, and I'll enjoy many, many more that we go through. Yeah, Absolutely. So it's been a great episode. Uh, you can find all these on um, – you can find YouTube. On, you can find it on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. There's a few other ones that we're not really too familiar with, but they're on there. Um, you can like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we. I think more, I think we would rather hear from you guys more. And, sure. you know, don't just leave – don't like, just don't – subscribe but actually reach out to us leave a comment ask us questions yeah, you can email us or email us at info, info at brandon baptist tabernacle.com we won't, easy to do we won't make you look dumb we won't we won't uh make fun of you uh unless it comes from dawson but um anything <laughs> else uh yeah so just but just email us we did would a great really, job teaching sunday school this morning he did a really good job but we would love to hear from you guys so um cherishing scripture podcast we're changing society by cherishing scripture thanks